Welcome back to the Grandstream Video Guide series. In this video, we will cover quality of service and demonstrate how to implement it on the Grandstream GWN 7800 series switch. We will start this video guide by covering the concepts of QoS and traffic classification. If you are already familiar with these topics, you can skip to the configuration section. Quality of service is a set of mechanisms that are implemented in a network to prioritize traffic from critical applications and services that are sensitive to delay and packet loss. Enabling quality of service ensures the expected service quality of critical applications when there is congestion in the network. For instance, applying QS to voice and video traffic can minimize the impact of a network congestion by ensuring this type of traffic has priority across the network. Essentially, quality of service allows switches and routers to always transmit the most important traffic first. Without quality of service, all traffic types are treated in the same fashion, and when network congestion occurs, all traffic types have an equal chance of being dropped. The quality of service process involves several steps and techniques. The first step in that process is to identify and classify the different types of traffic. After the traffic is classified and marked, it is sorted and placed in different queues or buffers based on the assigned class and priority. Then, traffic is forwarded upstream based on the implemented scheduling algorithm. Quality of service relies on traffic classification to determine which traffic type to prioritize. The class information included in an Ethernet frame and an IP packet allows a switch to separate network traffic into multiple classes. Each class is mapped to a specific priority level. For instance, applications and services sensitive to delay such as voice application can be assigned a class with a higher priority to ensure a high level of quality for real-time communications. It is important to keep in mind that a QS policy affects traffic priorities at the outbound port. To better understand how QS operates, it is important to know the methods used to classify network traffic. In this video, we will focus on COS and DSCP. 802.1p or class of service is a value that is carried in a layer 2 frame and applies to VLAN tag traffic only. When a trunk interface receives a frame that carries COS value, the switch will parse the COS information to determine the outbound priority queue for the frame. If a frame has a higher COS value, the frame is placed in a higher priority queue and is forwarded first. And as we will explain later in this video, each class maps to a queue with a priority level. Classification can also be done based on the DSCP values in the IP packet. DSCP stands for Differentiated Services Code Point. IP classification does not require the use of VLAN. DSCP values in the IP packet are used by a switch and a router to determine the forwarding priority of packets. It is possible to have an end-to-end -end QS with DSCP if all intermediary devices along a path implement the same DSCP value or at trust and keep the class information in the packet. This is a layer 2 frame header with 802.1Q tag field that carries the COS value in the three most significant bits, which are called the PCP bit. The three bits offer eight COS values that we can use to classify traffic. This table shows the mapping of the COS values and the traffic type. For instance, if we need to prioritize voice traffic from an IP phone, we can configure the IP phone with a class of service value of five. As you may have noticed, the higher the value, the higher the priority. Usually, we do not use values six and seven because they are reserved for network controlled traffic Every packet includes a DSCP field which is made up of six bits in the IP header. The six bits of the DS field are used to select the per hop behavior. There are four types of forwarding behaviors defined by DSCP. The default behavior operates on a best effort delivery basis, which means that all traffic has equal priority and equal chance of being dropped during network congestion. The DSCP field is backward compatible with the legacy IP precedents and class selector is used to retain backward compatibility with legacy routers that still rely on IP precedent. 
Assured forwarding specifies the traffic class and drop precedence. Expedited forwarding behavior type guarantees the available bandwidth for applications and devices that require low delay. Expedited forwarding type should be assigned to only critical traffic that is sensitive to delay such as an IPPBX or an IP phone. The DSCP table shown here does not include all the DSCP values and classes, but it includes some of the most used values and the type of traffic that should be assigned to. For instance, in an environment where voice traffic must be prioritized, the IPPBX can be configured with a DSCP value of 46, which provides the expedited forwarding behavior type. This ensures the switch always prioritizes voice traffic forwarding on the outbound interface. Traffic classification with AO2.1P and DSCP is generally confined to an enterprise network. Most internet service providers do not keep incoming QS information, and they simply override them. We go to QS section, and we will start with priority mapping. Priority mapping is used to map the QS information in the packet to the switch internal class of service which in turn determines the queue priority to which a packet belongs. The mapping tables in this configuration page can be used to convert layer two and layer three class information in the packet to the internal class value used by the switch. By default, layer two class of service defined in the 802.1p standard and the switch internal class of service have matching values when traffic enters the switch, the layer 2 information in the frame is mapped to the internal class of service, based on this mapping table. After the frame is processed for quality of service, the switch will remark outgoing frames based on this mapping table. Remember, 802.1p remarking works only with tag traffic. When a packet does not carry layer 2 value, the switch will use the layer 3 QS information which is included in the DSCP field. The mapping of DSCP values can be modified to match a particular internal class of service. For example, IP phones are usually set up to classify SIP traffic with DSCP value 26, which is mapped to the switch internal class value 3. If you decide to increase the priority of SIP traffic within the switch, you can change the COS value to 5, this change ensures that the SIP traffic has a higher priority and is less likely to be dropped when there is network congestion. The lower table is used to remark outgoing packets with the desired DSCP value, so the downstream switch or router can use that information in its QS process. For connected legacy devices that still use IP precedence instead of DSCP, you can use the IP mapping page. While DSCP offers 64 values, IP precedence has 8 priority values only. That explained what priority mapping does and how we can change it to map the QS information to the switch internal class of service. Now we go to Port Priority Configuration page to demonstrate how to apply the COS mapping to an interface. Select and edit one of the ports to look at parameters available. The trust mode can be configured to trust the class information in the incoming traffic on that port. By default, the ports are set to not trust the class information sent by connected devices. When trust mode is set to none, the switch will ignore the quality of service information in incoming traffic on that port and place the traffic in the default Q0, which has the lowest priority. Trust mode does not change the class information of an incoming packet when the switch forwards it outbound. Trust mode is only used for the internal forwarding priority within a switch. If you decide to enable the trust mode on a particular port, you need to choose the type of class information to trust. For instance, if you set the port to trust the 802.1p information, the switch port will parse the layer 2 class of service and map it to its internal forwarding class. The assigned forwarding priority is determined by the priority mapping tables that we explained earlier. If tag traffic is not used on the switch port, DSCP can be used instead. If the connected device is a legacy device, you can enable IP precedence, which is forward compatible with DSCP. 
and a network that has IP phones and to ensure that voice traffic is properly prioritized over other types of traffic, you should configure the switch port to trust the QoS information of incoming packets. If incoming traffic is tagged, you can choose 802.1p or DSCP or both. If incoming traffic is untagged, make sure you set the trust mode to DSCP. The option COS defines the internal forwarding priority of incoming traffic through this port. This option can be configured if the connected device does not support traffic classification for instance, if we set the COS value of this port to 5, which has a higher priority, all traffic coming through this port will be placed in the higher priority queue of an outbound port. Remarking options enable the switch port to change the QoS information of outbound traffic. For instance, when remarking DSCP is checked, the switch will change the DSCP information of the packet before it is forwarded out this port. If trust mode is set to none and remarking is enabled, the switch port will mark outgoing packets with the default DSCP value 0. When trust mode is set to any of the other options such as DSCP, remarking will change the DSCP value based on the class information in the received packet and the mapping table. After the traffic is classified and mapped to the switch internal forwarding class, it is placed in specific queues for scheduling. Every queue has an associated priority in which it is served. Queues are buffers where frames are placed in the order of priority before they are sent out through the outbound port. GWN 7800 series support 8 queues for each port. Q7 has the highest priority. Scheduling is the process of servicing frames in the queues, according to the scheduling method implemented in the switch. Essentially, the schedule chooses which frame should next be forwarded on the outbound port. GWN switches support five scheduling algorithms. Now we will switch back to the web interface to explain how each scheduling method works. Click on Queue Scheduling and select a switch port. GWN switches support five scheduling methods and each port can be configured with a particular method if needed. Strict priority is the default queuing algorithm. Strict priority schedules forwarding of frames according to the queue priority. Frames in lower priority queues are scheduled only after all frames in higher priority queues have been scheduled. The frames in Q7 have the highest priority and they are processed first. Frames in Q6 are scheduled only after Q7 is empty, and it goes this way for the rest of the queues in descending order of priority. When strict priority is selected, the wait for the queue does not take effect. One disadvantage of strict priority is that it might starve lower priority queues. Weighted fair queuing uses a weight based on the number of bytes. WFQ is designed with fairness in the sense that it ensures that each queue is serviced with regard to its weight per cycle. Every queue is assigned a certain weight which determines the fraction or percentage of the total bandwidth. If a higher priority queue is underutilized, the bandwidth will be shared by the remaining queues in proportion to their weights. Weighted round robin method assigns a packet-based weight to each queue to ensure all the queues are serviced during each cycle. The weight is based on the number of packets to be forwarded per cycle. For example, if Q7 is assigned a weight of 50, Q6 is assigned a weight of 30, and the rest of the queues are assigned a weight of 10, the switch will forward 50 packets from Q7, followed by 30 packets from Q6 and 10 packets from each of the rest of the queues in a rotational mode. This method ensures that all queues are serviced in proportion to the assigned weight. Strict priority can also be used in combination with fair queuing or round robin. When you set queue and algorithm to a hybrid mode, the switch will apply strict priority to the queues with a weight of zero and use the fair queuing or round robin method for the queues configured with a weight. When you select a hybrid mode, it is a good practice to set higher priority queues with strict priority method and the lower priority queues with the weighted methods. Queue shaping is the process of allocating a maximum rate of traffic per queue. When the maximum rate is exceeded, the switch will buffer excess traffic and reschedule it for later forwarding. 
Keep in mind that queuing is a concept that applies to outbound traffic and shaping is applied to the queues to restrict the output rate or traffic flow rate per queue. Queue shaping and queue scheduling can work in tandem. When you decide to enable queue shaping, make sure to enter the maximum rate in kilobits per second. Rate limit allows you to define the maximum rate of traffic transmitted or received on a particular port. For example, rate limit can be configured on an interface to protect a server or a low-speed device from being overwhelmed by burst traffic. Instead of the server dropping transmitted packets, the switch can limit the output rate and buffer the excess traffic for later transmission. This graph summarizes the quality of service process in the GWN switches. The first step in this process is to identify and classify incoming traffic based on the class information included in the packet. This step relies on the feature trust mode under port priority. For the switch to honor the QS information in the packet, trust mode should be enabled. Otherwise, the packet will default to internal class 0, which has the lowest priority. If the connected device does not support COS or DSCP, the packet can be marked at the switch port level using the COS option under port priority. When an incoming packet is marked by the switch port, the packet is automatically placed in the associated queue priority. For packets that carry QoS information, the switch will map that information to its internal forwarding class and eventually place them in the matching queue priority. The size of the buffer or queue is determined by the assigned bandwidth that you configure under queue shape and page. After the packets are placed in their associated queues, scheduling will service them based on the queuing algorithm used by the switch port. If remarking is enabled under port priority, the switch will remark the outgoing packet based on the remarking table. The rate of forwarding of packets is defined by the rate limit configured for the switch port. This wraps up today's video guide about quality of service on the Grandstream GWN switches. Stay tuned for more videos.